nobody ever rises until you are mindful of what you hear God is love what you hear Jesus came as an expression of the love of God what you hear he came to demonstrate the love of God is someone learning now many of us have been hearing a lot of things and it has destroyed our potential the price for all that you will be receiving tonight is fully paid last year we had our workers dinner and I watched as my precious people came gallantly and sat down and ate with joy and confidence everything that was before them some did not spare at all they had no time for any any composure that leads to regrets later on they ate whatever they had in front of them say fully paid fully paid The price for your rising fully paid now listen you will be wondering why it's been fully paid and yet it is not yet your inheritance this is my assignment to show you but whether or not you have experienced the dimensions of God you need the first thing is to accept that it is fully paid fully paid longevity fully paid prosperity say that one again prosperity your health and your life entering into your prophetic destiny the price for that mantle to rest on your life yes sir hallelujah if you like show me the photos of my forefathers holding arrows and bury whatever Congratulations for connecting me to history. But from the realm of the spirit, you are talking to the wrong person. Honestly, this is what I believe. Fully paid. Somebody, that, that's your revelation in Koinonia this night. Fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. The devil can go places, it is fully paid. Fully paid. Sit down, please. Do you know why this is powerful? Because you will see people receiving things tonight that they don't look like. It was not them that paid it. Someone paid it for them. Listen, if you think you are so poor and you are so weak and I decide to pay for a five bedroom flat with a three bedroom BQ, you will even be afraid as you are entering it, but it is still paid. You will adjust when you are inside. You can't adjust outside. The adjustment happens inside. It's a miracle service. So it's still a miracle service. Number four. Let's hurry up. What is the fourth revelation you must have? It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not give God glory. This is an uncomfortable truth, but you must accept it. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. This awareness is what will plant a dissatisfaction in you that even if it is after one year, I will fight the fight of faith. You cannot fight until you are aware that that current situation is not the will of God. If it is the will of God, then that means you are fighting God. If you think sickness is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God trying to get healed. If you think poverty is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God. The awareness of the will of God is what gives you the confidence to know what to fight and to know what to allow. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. Matthew chapter 8, 1 to 3. My goodness, let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 8. Watch this. When he was come down from the mountain, the Bible says... A great multitude followed him verse 2 and behold there came a leper and worshiped him saying Lord if thou will give us amplified in fact amplified thank you behold a leper came to him prostrating himself he worshiped him and said Lord if you are willing I don't know whether this is your will you are able to cleanse me from 
by curing me verse 3 read it as loud as you can my god i sense the power of god already and he reached out and touched him saying i am willing one more time i am willing one more time as a result be cleansed i am willing prosper i am willing rise i am willing be great you need to know what the will of god is this is one of the assignments of the holy spirit man of god it is the will of god for you to excel in ministry it's not the will of god for you to be small souls cannot be saved when you are small don't mind ignorant people it is god's will for you to rise to contend for strategic kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty it is the will of god for you to be anointed in ever increasing dimensions so you can do more for jesus it is the will of god for you to prosper so you can give in conferences like this without it affecting you and without you frowning father in the name of jesus everyone who is tied by any demonic chain of witchcraft I told your people that the price has been fully paid and I announce again to the realm of the spirit that every price for your liberty has been paid therefore in the name of Jesus be released now be released now bring them out Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Ta-da-da-da-da-da Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da Ta-da-da-da At the count of three i'm seeing fire falling now and as soon as that happens please bring them out quickly there are chains that are going to be breaking right now age long chains father in the name of jesus everyone under the sound of my voice who has been bound by witchcraft of any kind at the count of three let those chains be broken now one two three break now break now break now Break now! Break now! Break now! Break now! Sakate pakato katsegeta. I command those chains to be broken. No matter how long they have tied you, tied your family, tied your destiny. In the name of Jesus, be broken right now. Chains of poverty, chains of sickness afflictions of any and all kinds be broken now bring them out mysterious chains afflictions in the dream all kinds of things eating demonic things going to satanic places i arrest them now by the fire of the holy ghost i arrest them now by the fire of the holy ghost hear me I'm hearing in my spirit remove names from covens in the name of Jesus this one I'm going to pray for you I'm going to ask you to shout Jesus any name of anyone here or any family that has been written in any satanic coven right now as you shout that name let fire burn everything right now one two three shout jesus let it be burnt now let it be burnt now every ordinance every ill speaking every ordinance be broken be broken 
blotting out every handwriting be broken in the name of Jesus please bring them out quickly whether you are an usher or not if someone is under the anointing close to you please bring them there's a reason I ask you to bring them the ushers are limited my apologies but please help them chains 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 be broken chains be broken chains be broken i'm hearing kogi state kogi state kogi state what is it that has to do with ancestry that is tying down people from that region right now you are from that state anything that has that has tied you down be broken now be broken now i'm hearing kogi state let it be broken now let it be broken now hallelujah now please hear me the lord wants to bring deliverance to families if at all they marry the women must return back to their parents homes i'm praying for you i don't know what curse and what yoke is upon such families but right now in the name of jesus by the authority that is in the finished work of christ let that curse be broken now 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 I'm hearing in my spirit shame and reproach hear me I preached a message here last year called Ichabod there are many of you as you are standing now there is no dignity and no honor in your life everything that represents honor for you and your family has been taken away by darkness can i pray for you that veil i, I tell you i see the power of god resting on people right now every veil sitting on your head covering your glory bringing shame and reproach i tear that veil now i tear that veil now I tear that veil now. I tear that veil now. Tell me what you want God to do in this miracle service for you. And feel free, don't be embarrassed. You would be amazed that many people's request is growth dependent. That means as sincere as they are desiring God to answer his love for them would not allow some of those requests to be answered are we together because god is not just interested in meeting your needs he's interested in you experiencing his glory and then becoming a manifestation of that glory so in order of spiritual priority god's highest joy is not to see that your needs are met his greatest joy is to see that you become an experience of his glory a manifestation of his glory in experience it's impossible to be a manifestation of God's glory in experience and be found wanting in so many areas as captured by your prayer request now there's nothing wrong with your prayer request but I'm challenging you that there is a more excellent way for the believer that you get to a point where God would have so sorted you by his faithfulness and in honor to your growth that when it's time to write requests, you will have to be calling people. I'm going to church. What would you want the Lord to do for you? It becomes an intercessory prayer request. Because as for you, you have gained mastery in the spirit. You have got to a point where you have laid hold on eternal life, the Bible says. Are we together? You have given diligence to make your calling and your election sure. So while you contend to have your various requests answered, it's important to have it at the back of your mind that God's best for me is not just taking my answers month in, month out. Are we together? That kind of epileptic victory is not the believer's destiny. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always, always, always to triumph. Always to triumph. I needed to say this because, you see, as a man of God, your greatest desire over your people 
is to consistently measure their growth. Are we together? That, and you measure their growth using many indices. When I was a child, I understood like a child. I spoke like a child. I taught like a child. So these are the biblical indices. So as I speak to you, I can measure your growth. Your words tell me how much you know God and how much you have grown. Your thought pattern, it tells how much the word has prevailed over your mind. Prevailed over your thinking. Are we together? The way you understand, which translates to the way you behave. My pride as a man of God over anyone God has put under my chair. It's not just that you have once in a while testimonies, but that you lay hold on eternal life. You have attained unto a state of mastery in the spirit. So that you would know what spiritual laws are connected to what outcomes. I hope you understand what I'm saying now. So you are not hoping to come for a miracle service. For your finance to be sorted, for your prayer life to be sorted, for favor to speak. No. Is that you have laid, you have found the key. When favor is deficient in your life, by knowledge you know what to engage. You can literally, with the intelligence of a consultant, you can diagnose another believer's deficiency in light of what you know. And then be able to provide solution. So if someone comes to you and says, um, you know, I'm having all kinds of attacks in my life. You don't just say, hey, yeah, this attack is everywhere or you are not the only one. You are even lucky that you are alive. That is not a mature believer's communication. That kind of communication does not defend the word you have received. Are we together? On hearing such a thing, several scriptures and several mysteries and several principles should just go around your spirit that you can draw from them and say, my brother, without sounding arrogant, I have the answer to your problem. He says, Savior shall come out of Zion. Are we together now? Yes. That when people see you, they become happy as though they have seen God. Because you have become a worthy ambassador. That every time you show up in the life of people, in the life of families, your stability is based on knowledge. You don't join people to be at a loss as to what to do. Someone tells you, for instance, all doors are closed towards me. One sermon already begins to ring in your spirit. And you can literally draw forth the principles and say, My friend, if doors are not open, I can tell you what is wrong. Number one, doors open by the use of the correct keys. Not the use of keys. The use of the correct keys. You are either holding the wrong key or you are standing before the wrong door. And you can tell the other person doors open because of relationships. When you knock, the person at the back end must be willing to open that door. You have helped that person with precision. Another person comes to you and says, I have been plagued by the spirit of death. All kinds of dreams. You don't look at the person and say, let's pray. From a faithless standpoint. Not even believing what you are saying. I hope God is challenging you. And so the average believer will say something like, let's pray. Father, Lord, God Almighty, and whatever it is you have to say, we thank you for this day, this man's problem. You are the only one who can solve it. I pray that you solve the person's problem. Let him not die in Jesus' name. That looks very spiritual. But that is not a, a, a worthy representation of the kingdom. Death does not just happen. As haphazard as it looks. There are laws that sponsor death and there are laws that prohibit death. Are we together? Death is not just a phenomenon. Listen, death is also a spirit. The rider upon the fourth horse, holding a pair of balances. His name is death. Power was given to him to kill. So you can tell the person, listen, the Bible says death, life and death. Is in the power of the tongue. Are we together now? Yes. That I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And you don't just believe it mechanically. It's going to be a product of deep meditation. Backed up by obedience. Many of the things that bring believers to a service such as this. I repeat again for your learning. 
depends not just on the prophetic decrees of the man of God, it depends on their willingness to grow. If you do not grow, it will look like God is not faithful in your life. Regardless the kind of prayer, regardless the kind of prophetic words, you may even receive temporal results, but because the knowledge bank to sustain it is not there, is the reason why Satan is not afraid of certain believers receiving. Do you know why? Because it's like pouring water in a basket. He's not afraid. Let the prophetic word follow you. You will have the breakthrough, but it means nothing because in the presence of ignorance, Ignorance is like a child holding something and an adult wanting it. There's nothing the child can do about it. The adult will just pick it helplessly. That's how many believers are. So the devil is not really concerned whether you receive anything from God. The sower sowed the seed, the word. Satan was not afraid. Listen, there's no record in scripture that Satan fears the word of God. No. There is no record I know in scripture that the devil is afraid of the word of God. Satan is afraid of what happens when the believer engages the word. Because it is at the point of engaging the word that God's power is released to perform. Not the arrival of the word. They heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying this because it's important. I'll be running through a few things as a charge for us tonight. But this was my contemplation and the Holy Spirit just breathed this reality. And I thought to myself how true this statement is. If I ask you to bring me a sample of the things you have written now, as well intentioned as those lists are, you will find out that if God is a faithful God, some of those prayers should not be answered. Because that version of you, it will not be a blessing if it is answered. In fact, some of the prayer requests are only a testament of your understanding of God. Because what you are writing as the problem may not be the problem. For instance, if in your prayer request you wrote, Father, grant Uncle Sam, grant Uncle Joshua Selman to pay my school fees by force. Just an example. Now, you will submit it and just because I'm laying hands on it, does not mean God is committed indefinitely. No. He looks at you the way a father looks like a child. And his mercy overrides your ignorance and limitation, hoping that you will learn. But in God's ideal template, no. The moment you tie God to a man, you have shown that he's not powerful enough. No. You cannot say God tied it. No, 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 no. God does not work like that. He says, Our Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. Nothing is too difficult for you. So by the time your faith is tied to a man, it's auxiliary faith. It's not authentic Bible faith. God will use men, but you don't choose the men He will use. Are you learning? God will always use men. But you will not choose the men that he will use. So you can see, I'm just showing you an example. That so many believers write all kinds of things. And just because you drop it in the basket. You are hoping that it will be ticked. And you find out that out of the ten prayer requests. Seven of them are products of ignorance. So God just comes by His mercy and just helps you. Hmm. Are we learning? Many of our answers are growth dependent. Many results in your life, I tell you sincerely, will depend on growth, not desire. Desire is important, a fair starting point. But to the believer, commanding victory in experience, Commanding total and wholesome victory is not a product of sentiment. It's a product of growth. The Bible says an heir, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. For as long as that heir is a child, he says he differed nothing from a servant or a slave. Even though in his destiny he's Lord of all. Give us NIV and see what NIV says concerning this scripture. Can you give us NIV? 
What I am saying is that as long as an heir is a child, she is no different from a slave, although she owns the whole estate. So you remain at the realm of potentials when you are a child, seeing what God can do, but never stepping into the experience of it. Seeing that he can heal, that he can lift, that he can bless, that he can advance, that he can prosper, that he can rewrite stories. Let me tell you the truth. Your Christian experience becomes frustrating when you are aware of what God can do and yet you do not grow to a point where you step into that experience. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Now, I wrote something down here and I want to run a very interesting list for you. Please listen very carefully. You desire to enjoy and maximize what God has in store for you here at this miracle service. Then I want you to listen because this is really where the miracle starts. Are we together? I wrote a few things here. I call them enemies of advancement, enemies of triumph, enemies of liberty. Enemies of joy, enemies of rest. They are enemies. The enemies, the real enemies. I want to show you now. That when you talk about an enemy, it means one who is opposed to your advancement, opposed to your moving forward. You will be learning now that Satan is only one of these enemies. It's amazing that the average believer's scope of understanding is that the only principal enemy to your becoming, to your receiving, to your imagining is Satan. And that should Satan be taken out of the way, all your problems will miraculously and for some thinking magically be solved. It doesn't work that way. I assure you, if Satan is bound today and all the demons on earth are bound today, there are still believers who will fail. That is when you will know that Satan is an important factor as far as opposing the believers concerned, but not the only factor. And Satan likes it when believers magnify him beyond his proportion. Are we together now? So the centrality of the non-informed believers thinking is that Satan is the ultimate and the principal reason as to why my liberty, my advancement, my becoming, my imagining, my becoming joyful is limited or prohibited. I'm here to prove to you tonight that it's not true. Satan is a significant factor. The Bible tells us to not be unaware of his devices. But one of his major devices is to magnify himself to a point where um, believers and unbelievers alike look at him as the singular principal reason to everything that is not God in your life. It is not true. It is not true. It is not true. So I call them here enemies of advancement, also enemies of triumph, also enemies of liberty, also enemies of joy. In fact, enemies of rest. As I run through this list, it's a charge. I need to put your heart in this understanding so that you will appreciate everything the Spirit of God is going to be doing in this place. And so that your attention will not just be when I begin to minister to people, whether prophetically or just praying for the sick, you will be learning for someone as you hear me run this list. God is going to pin one or two and tell you this is a real demon to defeat out of your life. And then you will walk in the experience of liberty. Are you prepared? Number one, the first enemy to a man's advancement is ignorance. Write this down, please. Complete ignorance. This kingdom, like you have learned, is knowledge dependent. The manifestation of the God life, walking in the experience of the Zoe life, is highly knowledge dependent. Acts 19 and verse 2. Let's walk very quickly, media. Acts 19 and verse 2. This is Paul now. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him in response, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. A man can be this ignorant. A man can be this ignorant that you have not even heard that God can lift. 
you will be amazed that many bodies of spiritual truth that you take for granted here, there can be many believers who are saved but have not even heard that the Holy Ghost can assist men. Not even heard that prayer produces power. Not even heard, are we together now, that giving is connected to increase. Not even heard. Verse 2, same scripture. We have not even heard. Go back to verse 2 and leave it at verse 2, please. We have not so much as heard. He asked them a simple question. In addition to your believing, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we don't even know what you are saying. We are believers. Being mentored by someone. They were victims of the limitation of the knowledge of whoever was teaching them. They were disciples. But they said, we have not even heard. Ignorance is dangerous. It can alienate men from the potential of the life of God. Ephesians 4.18 Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. The first enemy to any man's destiny, any man's advancement, any man's walking in triumph, any man's experiencing liberty is ignorance. In Luke chapter 19, 41 down to 44, Luke chapter 19, the second reason why Jesus wept in scripture, there are two reasons why Jesus wept at least as revealed in scripture. Number one was at the grave of Lazarus, he wept because he loved him, they said. The second reason was Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. And here's what he said. That he beheld the city and he wept over it. Reading to 44. And he said this. Next verse please. If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace. The things which lead to the experience of your peace. He says, but now they are hid from your eyes. 43. For the day shall come upon thee, and thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. I like 44. Here's what it says. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave thee in one stone upon another, because thou knew not the time of thy visitation. Ignorance in all its ramifications puts the believer at a point of disadvantage. Can I give you the second? The second enemy to a man's advancement perhaps might be a, the reason why you have written a request, where you have come desiring a touch from God. Limiting beliefs. A faulty mentality. The second enemy. Limiting beliefs. A faulty mentality is not ignorance is the wrong information, inaccurate information, incomplete information. Limiting beliefs. You have learned here and it bears repeating that mentality defines destiny. And it does so by determining the kinds of choices and decisions that you make. Mentality in truth defines destiny. The quality of a man's destiny is determined not just by the will of God, not just by the love of God. In spite of God's predeterminate counsel as revealed in scripture, a man's destiny in experience will in large proportions be a product of the quality or otherwise of his thinking. Limiting beliefs, faulty mentality. Number three. The third enemy to advancement, the third enemy to liberty, the third enemy to stepping into the experience of rest is called procrastination. This one hit me seriously. I had to repent before God myself. Indecision slash procrastination. It occurred to me again how devilish this tool can be in the hand of Satan. Procrastination. It impacted me so much, I had to take a moment to define this. And I want you to listen to my definition. Here's what procrastination means. The act of putting off or delaying something requiring prompt action. Despite knowing that there will be negative consequences. Often because it is stressful, unpleasant or boring. Listen before you write. 
that procrastination is defined as the act of putting off completely or delaying something that requires prompt action despite knowing that there will be negative consequences often because it is stressful often because it is unpleasant or uncomfortable often because it is boring procrastination the devil and the cancer that has destroyed great destinies that even if satan were not on earth the fact that time is on earth many believers many leaders would still be failures for this singular factor procrastination can we examine a few scriptures proverbs 20 and verse 4 20 and verse 4 proverbs the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold therefore shall he beg in harvest and want nothing who is the sluggard the one who is slack not apt to taking action it's too cold i can't come out flimsy excuses proverbs 18 and verse 9 proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9 god is helping someone he says he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster him also that is slothful in his work listen now is brother to him that is a great waster nobody likes waste no organization likes waste not even god are we together now the story of gathering the crumbs that made up 12 baskets is proof that god hates waste and yet the bible says a man that procrastinates being slothful giving excuses is friend and brother to him that is a great waster Psalm 119 and verse 60. Many people procrastinate even as touching the word of God. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Let's read together. One to read. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. One more time. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. There are consequences. Delayed obedience, they say, is disobedience in a measure. When God commanded Abraham, my Bible says in Genesis 22, that Abraham rose up early. He rose up early. Timing. He rose up early. Procrastination. Are you ready for number four? I'm giving you the real enemies. So that when we are praying and asking God to obtain grace and triumph over the enemies of our advancement your mind does not just think deliverance from spirit alone you would have robbed yourself of an opportunity to be truly free ignorance limiting beliefs or a faulty mentality procrastination or indecision number four inaction inaction the laxity to move this is not procrastination you know what to do the matching order is already there but laziness that inertia in action proverbs 14 23 someone is being delivered from this now shout a believing amen in all labor there is profit in all labor there is profit in all labor look at this scripture carefully there is profit but the talk of the lips tended only to penury in africa we call it making mouth that the one who is busy talking things and the one who bends down to get the things done you imagine two people one person carrying the hoe or the farming utensils and his seed laboring in the farm plowing the land and another person who is speaking and say you know this soil is not really loamy soil are you aware of that at the end of it the bible says the man who is just talking empty talk without work like james admonished us that that person will tend to penury he's not just speaking in terms of finances alone that he will always be in insufficiency and want the person who is just talking about prayer and the one actually praying it is the one actually praying who have the profits from prayer. Are we together? The person talking about obedience and the one who is actually doing the obedience. The profit is in the doing, 
the labor to do not just the labor to know not just the labor to speak he says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them now that ye know these things knowledge becomes profitable when it partners with action inaction inaction how many people would have gotten jobs today but not just because of procrastination in action in action in action five is someone learning the fifth enemy to your advancement your triumph your liberty your rest is called lack of strategies this one is a very powerful one lack of strategies another word inefficiency lack of strategies this one concerns many leaders they know what to do prophecy is already there the vision is already there but i have told you it is prophecy plus strategy that equals manifestation is vision plus strategy that equals manifestation i don't care what god told you quite honestly i don't care what the blueprint you have for your future it will never come to pass until you press to receive in addition to that vision in addition to that prophetic word the strategy allocated your real victory is not knowing that you will defeat jericho your real victory is receiving the strategy on how to bring jericho down your real victory is not crossing the red sea or moving to the other side is knowing how you are going to maneuver your way from the other end of the red sea to the other end of the red sea walking on water is an option parting the red sea is an option using a boat is an option they are all options so you have to stay with god every prophetic word requires a strategy every vision requires a strategy every season requires a strategy all strategies do not work on all visions no sir the engine for instance of a toyota car as well built as it is may not fit a mercedes benz that does not mean there's anything wrong with that engine the nature of the configuration and if you have to force a toyota engine to work say for instance in a mercedes you will have to cut too many things adjust too many things and manage that experience for the rest of your life or your driving experience many people are not able to excel because they have not stayed with god you know what god has told you you will become but has he told you how it will happen no wonder mary kept the angel and said don't go how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man how don't just tell me it will happen how shall these things be luke 1 34 she asked him how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man I, the natural way of having a child is a man and his wife now you are telling me i'm not yet married to joseph and you are telling me I'm going to be with child, albeit without the direct assistance of a man. So explain to me what other strategy is there. I'm not aware. And the answer came in verse 35. Hallelujah. Give it to us verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost. Do you know this is a powerful revelation? That means, just help those under the anointing. Listen. It means everything that is natural has a spiritual dimension to it that god can reroute the same thing when god puts principles it's not because he's limited it's to create order when situations call for change he can circumvent those things the normal course is for mary and joseph to birth a child but he's saying listen you have been taught that it is mary and joseph that equals a baby however there is still another technology in the spirit when the holy ghost comes he can do something that gives you the result don't be surprised when you see mary pregnant and you can't find joseph it is not always disobedience is that the holy ghost has come to supplement i know that that promotion should come after 10 years 
That is the principle. But don't be surprised when a 10 year old harvest comes to a man in one day. It is not unusual. When the Holy Ghost comes, he can rewrite things. I know that the angel comes to steer the water once a year. If you miss that moment until next year, but not when Jesus comes. When he comes, he can redefine the seasons. It's true. How shall these things be? I do not know a man. However, he says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. 